life is a cosmic phenomenon linked to a vast cosmos of which we are an utterly insignificant part. There is very little doubt now that the first life on Earth came with impacting comets. And the subsequent evolution of life from the simplest microorganisms to all the way to ourselves uh, happened against a continuing influx of bacteria and viruses from space. Viruses and bacteria being introduced by comets and meteors. These entities, these microbial entities, essentially add new genes, new genetic potential that enables life to proliferate, to evolve, to advance. Darwinian evolution alone, just random mistakes in uh, copying, that's all that the standard theory has, that you're copying a genome over and over again, you accumulate errors, copies are never perfect, and the mysterious uh, theory that has been advanced is that amongst these random errors, you would get innovations, sort of grand innovations turning up now and then. I think that's totally erroneous, so there's no evidence for it. The whole universe is involved in the origin, the emergence of life, and the emergence of infectious diseases also is connected with that process. Diseases from space, life coming from space, are just part of this grand story. These two books were written way back in 1979 and 1980. They're called Diseases from Space and Evolution from Space. And amazingly, all that we said in these books 40 years ago are still mainly relevant. The events that have been played, played out now, really live in front of us on the COVID-19 story, is just one aspect of this uh, theory that is being verified at this very moment. If you have a wrong theory, then over a period of 40 years, sooner or later, new facts will come and prove that you're wrong. This has not happened. Instead, a whole avalanche of most unexpected data has come from many different quarters, all of which supports the idea that life came from space and consequently diseases like the coronavirus also came from space. I think the last year when the coronavirus uh, event occurred has been somewhat, somewhat special in relation to the Earth's uh, situation in space. During the minimum of sunspot cycle, which is what we are experiencing now, the lowest minimum in perhaps 100 or 120 years, we have almost an open invitation for these viruses to come in without any impediment. The countries that have seen the fireballs have witnessed fireball events uh, and meteor events particularly are, are very interesting because they are places where there has been a breakthrough from the stratosphere and anything that was lurking in the stratosphere, uh, deposited from comets and so on, would have had a, a better chance of getting down in these particular places. There have been large clusters of cases occurring suddenly, simultaneously, in isolated communities. And one such community is the Lombardy Valley in northern Italy, uh, where there was, on one day there were no cases, and a few days later, hundreds of cases, very large numbers of infected particles fell through with meteor dust. The virus was actually identified in the Italian outdoor regions uh, around the Lombardy Valley, isolated from air filters, showing that the virus was still in the air at the time, in the atmosphere, in the lower atmosphere. Now, a few months later, in early June, the virus has been reported to have completely disappeared. One way in which uh, the conservative uh, establishment of epidemiologists have tried to explain um, these outbreaks, these sudden explosive outbreaks, is to say that there has been a super spreader uh, entering that community. Now, it's a totally unproved proposition. There's no proof of it, but that's the way that um, conventional science has tended to explain how suddenly 
you can have maybe 20, 30 people going down with a disease, it need not be COVID, it could be influenza, and there's no evident uh, person who has brought in that infection. I think this is pure fantasy, it's a myth because uh, there's no evidence for it. In 1978, there was a pandemic of what was called a red flu, a flu that started in Russia, so it was called red flu, and it affected uh, young people mostly all over the world. And myself and my colleague Fred Hall, we decided to carry out a survey of the way that this pandemic was spreading in schools in both England and Wales. And what we found was that the incidence of the disease was extremely patchy. It was an indication that the virus was uh, not everywhere, but falling in sort of little blobs over the, uh, over the countryside, over the cities and so on. Some schools were badly affected, some schools were not affected. Now these kids were distributed amongst the boarding houses, they went there to sleep and to eat and so forth. But during the daytime, they were mixing in the playing field and the classroom. Uh, what we found was that certain houses had a huge number of cases. Maybe 70% of the, the kids in one house came down with the flu. And in another, in another house, maybe there was only one or two cases. So this was again a puzzle for us. And we explained it in terms of a patchy incidence uh, of the virus. It comes in the air falls, it gets into sort of little turbulent uh, air bubbles and, and some places get more and other places get less or get nothing. We published that in the book Diseases from Space. Very, very similar events have re been repeated even in the case of the COVID uh, outbreak. I think the most uh, lethal situation for getting COVID or getting any viral disease is uh, to, to be out in the atmosphere whilst the virus is falling, whilst the virus is drifting through the atmosphere and there's a high concentration of virus in the air near ground level. If you're walking around the streets, then I think you have a very, very high chance of getting the virus. Uh, that's the, 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 the most powerful way in which you get the virus in the first instance. And then the person to person spread, as I said, has to happen because viruses are infective uh, agents. We know that a single liter of ocean water, if you take a, go into the, the Atlantic Ocean, say, take a bucket full of water, a single liter contains a hundred billion uh, viral particles at the very least. And where did they come from? I think there's no doubt at all that these viruses and these bacteria that we see in the oceans have come from space. Why do we not admit it? I think this is a big question. Two, two years ago, uh, a group of international scientists uh, took equipment to the 4,000 meter peaks of the Sierra Nevada mountains, and they looked at the infall of rain and mist and so forth onto the tops of the mountains and looked for microorganisms, viruses, and bacteria. And the conclusion they came was really stark. They found, they discovered without any, any, any doubt now, that some 800 million viruses fall on every square meter of the planet every single day. Just think of that, 800 million viruses. I think uh, my belief is that the vast majority of these are what is continually coming from space. Uh, a group of us uh, collaborated with the Indian Space Research Organization. We sent balloons to 41 kilometers in the stratosphere under the most strict conditions of uh, aseptic conditions. No contamination was possible. We collected large quantities of air brought it down to Earth in laboratories that were also uh, strictly controlled in terms of contamination. And we found that there was a huge number of viruses, bacteria particularly, uh, that was uh, discovered in air samples at 41 kilometers. This is way up in the stratosphere. 
the estimate that we had of the infall of bacteria was 20 to 2,000 million bacteria per square meter per day. And that's, these are the numbers that we come, come up with, huge numbers. The question of whether what we found in 2001 is contamination from the earth is being a very fraught question that people have tried to avoid the conclusion that they come from space by saying that they might have come from the surface of the earth. Now, is that possible? I think there are conditions, very, very rare conditions like volcanic eruptions, where you can lift stuff to even higher than 41 kilometers, but there was no volcano. There was no volcanic eruption within 10 years of that uh, collection date. That's a really strange uh, way of escaping an un unwanted conclusion. Last year, a group of Russian scientists have actually discovered on the outside, on the exterior surface of the International Space Station, live bacteria. And there's no question that these have come from space. I think to argue that they have come from the ground is almost absolutely is bizarre. Some people still continue to try to do that. But all of my colleagues who are sort of absolute experts in atmospheric science tells, us, tells me that this is just not possible. It's really very important for the future that we have a program to monitor the skies for our safety. If one looks at all the facts, there is no doubt that epidemics throughout history have been connected with comets. They often affect entire cities, entire countries, or even widely separated parts of the earth in a matter of days or weeks. The epidemics come suddenly and disappear equally suddenly. And they also are very patchy in their incidence. There are places that are affected and nearby regions that are not affected. So it's very, very similar to what happens in situations like what's happening today uh, for COVID-19. It's also similar to situations that were happening in 1918, 1919 during the so-called Spanish influenza pandemic. One important piece of historic evidence that emerged 101 years ago relates to the great influenza pandemic of 1918-1919, which apparently caused some 20 to 30 million deaths worldwide. Dr. Louis Weinstein in 1976 reviewed all the available data, the literature, the newspaper reports, the medical reports and so on, and he wrote as follows, and I quote, Although person-to-person -person spread occurred in local areas, the disease appeared on the same day in widely separated parts of the world on the one hand, but on the other it took days to weeks to spread relatively short distances. It was detected in Boston and Bombay on the same day, but two, three weeks before it reached New York City. Showing up on the same day in Boston and Bombay defies belief because there was no air travel in those times and there was no way in which people could have transferred that disease between Boston and Bombay in less than the time that ships take to go across. And that would have been several months. There were isolated pockets of uh, infection that showed up completely out of contact with the rest of the United States. In Alaska, for instance, large numbers of people suddenly came down with influenza, died, and they're buried in the permafrost now. And it's from some of these burials that the virus has uh, actually been detected in the 1970s, 1980s. So this uh, pattern of, of patchiness of incidents was really very striking. The disease does not follow that pattern. The, the, the distribution of disease across the world, across the United States, did not follow a simple pattern of one person infecting another. So it was certainly falling from the skies, no question about it. To avoid that conclusion was really quite a serious, um, essentially, miscarriage of scientific propriety, in my view. My collaborator, 
who is a medical scientist, a biomedical scientist and an immunologist, has been working on the RNA sequences of the COVID virus. And he has concluded that there's really no way in which uh, person to person spread can explain anything but minor spread, a very minute degree of spreading. And there's also no evidence according to him of the virus being a rapidly mutating virus, nor of it coming from bats or pangolins, bats via pangolins. Uh, so by and large, I think one has to conclude that the virus, the origin of the virus is unknown, despite the strident claims of many distinguished groups of scientists who say that, well, the virus came from uh, from the wet markets of, uh, of Wuhan. And there's no evidence for that at all. You may not like the idea that the virus came from space, but um, it fits with a certain huge body of scientific evidence that supports the thesis that has been around for over 40 years, that both diseases come from space and evolution of life is also directed from from space microbes, space bacteria and viruses.